Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tech Talk. Uh, here with us today, we have Amit and myself. We are going to talk about GNSS. This might be a bit of an unfamiliar topic to a lot of you, but uh, part of it is very, uh, very familiar. GNSS stands for Global Navigation Satellite System. And a lot of you would probably be familiar with a subset of this topic, which is GPS, which we're going to uh, talk a lot about in this topic. But uh, yeah, the parent topic, the, the overall uh, bigger idea is GNSS. And uh, it is an interesting talk topic, very technical, and uh, quite excited to talk about it today. Amit, thank you for coming up with this topic. I don't really know a lot, but I'm looking forward to learning from from you today, so yeah, let's uh, let's start talking about it. What's what's uh, GNSS? So Global Navigation Satellite System uh, is GNSS, and but first of all, thank you so much for uh, the introduction, Renath. Um, I wanted to touch uh, base on this topic is because. Uh, we are all familiar with GPS and we are all using it constantly in our daily lives for navigation, for uh, checking which are the closest restaurants near us, etc, etc, based on our location. So we are constantly using it. But uh, do we really understand how the technology works and what are the implications and what are the other systems and why GNSS, uh, what is GPS and what are the other satellite systems? So that's why I just wanted to touch base on this topic to uh, get people familiarized with a type of technology that is quite ubiquitous but yeah i mean a lot of people don't know actually about it a lot yeah and when you talk about navigation system you i mean you know we always come back to this about privacy and security and things like that and gps or gnss would have a like a large part talking about <clears throat> how you're being tracked, right? That's, that's, a, that's a really uh, important part of the topic itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there are so many um, sort of areas where GNSS or GPS can be explored into. And uh, it's, it's very interesting and complex topic because you know, the, the technology behind it is, is so interesting and it, you know, could date back to all the way back to Newton's uh, theory of uh, gravity and, um, you know, from there and how we found that that doesn't work and Einstein's theory prevails because of the minute changes in, in calculations. So these are all, all very interesting and hopefully you guys could enjoy this talk with us and as we explore the topic further. Yeah, so, so let me first like uh, make it a bit clear that it has got nothing to do with privacy the reason being we are just receiving a signal on a radio device that's it it's just as simple as that we are not sending anything out oh so, right okay so all the calculation is done on your phone on your device actually right okay so but does google not track your location does it not google really tracks the location but the satellite the system itself doesn't track it you use a ah. system yeah, the, the phone itself will track your location, they'll track all the voice, they'll track all the search history. Yes, it does. But we are not talking about the phone, we are talking about the system itself. So, right. so let's, okay. let's, let's start from the beginning. Global Navigation yeah. Satellite System. Global, it means it covers the whole planet. Navigation means you are using some system to navigate around the planet to go from one place to another navigation means to go from one place to another it over land over sea over mountains etc and the satellite system is basically you are using the satellite then not a single satellite but a system of satellites multiple satellites 20 30 satellites in that system and together it's called a navigation satellites global navigation satellite system and there are different countries who are who have made their own systems and what we call them is a constellation a constellation from what we have read when we were young is basically nothing but a group of stars a group of stars together is called a constellation similarly a group of satellites together can be called a constellation now if you look back systems which which were there before gps came uh, we had maps someone had to draw the maps and then we used to look at the sun and then we used to decide where we are 
but if it is the night we used to look at the stars we used to say this is the north pole oh, sorry the north star and based on the north star if you are in the northern hemisphere if you are in the southern hemisphere you have a different star so if you are in the southern hemisphere you have the uh, southern star and based on the star you would be able to navigate okay so that there, there is that constellation there is this constellation and based on where you are or what you can see you can then maybe to a certain extent figure out where you are in the world or how far you are from where you started so that was how we navigated okay so we look at a tree we look at the star then we move then we look at another tree another star etc etc and similarly over the period of time we looked at how the sun moves so we have a sundial so we know how what's the time of the day etc so looking at the stars you could tell the time and you could also navigate similarly with a gps system you are able to navigate as well as know where you are in the world and then figure out what time is it because based on the location you can figure out what time is it on your uh, at the particular location so gps gps was started by us and it is still operated by us so us owns the satellite system they they launch the new satellites each satellite lasts for about 10 years and once a satellite gets old they uh, renew it by sending a new satellite okay in that constellation um, there are about 24 to 30 satellites each satellite takes about uh, 12 hours or you can say they complete two rounds of planet earth in 24 hours okay so two rounds of planet earth in 24 hours so that's the satellite system okay that is what the satellite is doing now in order to control the satellite you need a ground station you send a signal okay steer here stay in orbit uh, okay what is the time on your uh, on your uh, sat on the satellite okay this is the time here on earth so can we just sync the time like we sync with atomic clocks or we sync with different servers so we sync the time we look at uh, whether they are at the right orbit do we have to give them enough thrust so that they stay in orbit then uh, is there any software maintenance needed etc so there is a ground system taking care of that those satellite systems so so sorry to interrupt so gps as far as i know it stands for global positioning system yes, right yes yes So a lot of the times, what happens is whenever I hear an acronym, when I hear the full form, it kind of gives me a bit of sense. And so I thought that global positioning system is a like a global solution by all the different countries. They all collaborated. But now you are saying GPS is just US. So how does this? I mean, what does global positioning system even mean? Like so, um, basically, the system was launched by US. uh when it was launched it was launched by the us military for their purposes and it was called navstar when it became public when it was given out to the public that's when it became actually gps global positioning system okay but it is just one constellation maintained by a country okay so those are satellites someone has to send the satellite remember that someone has to send the satellite someone has to uh maintain it on course then uh, once the life of the satellite is over they have to send another satellite and someone has to send it on a rocket someone has to buy space on a rocket ship to uh, launch those satellites so someone has to do all that work now there is no collaboration right now in even in international space station which is majority uh us it is still coordinated by other uh, countries but still it is iss is all a, a us baby it is still an international cooperation but it's more of a us baby so similarly gps is a us baby so gps is maintained by us and it was the first system and now there are other systems in the world which can be used for uh, navigation now if you go to gsm so arena go ahead yeah so um so when i am right now we are both in uk right and you know we are you were we're getting our positions in google maps or wherever we we're using gps as far as i know it was gps but is it not called gps so so and because, when, I, when because I'm gps to another yes. part of the world like middle east or you know am i using something else which is called something else so so yeah again so let's 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 cover the basics first then i'll i'll explain so so we have one system 30 satellites around about 30 satellites they take uh, they complete two cycles around the planet um and uh, 
and the satellite is basically sending a radio signal why radio because radio can travel long distances wi-fi doesn't travel outside our house so you need a signal stronger than wi-fi maybe a radio signal but fm or am you don't know right so there is a basically a radio signal that's coming and our smartphones are basically nothing but a radio device right we s receive a signal from a cell phone tower that's a radio signal it could be it could be maybe not at the radio frequency but at some other frequencies but it's still effectively electromagnetic wave that's coming to your phone let's say it's a radio signal because voice is there etc and we have to carry the voice over a long distance sometimes what happens is it's uh, part of it is traveling digitally and the part other part is uh, like uh, analog but most of it is uh, still uh, radio signal now this satellite is sending a signal the phone is receiving it and there is a ground station that's controlling the whole system so there are three systems involved the satellite the ground station and the receiver the receiver could be a smartphone it could be a smart watch it could be any gps device okay we call it a gps device now how does it how does your phone know where you are the satellite is not telling me where i am i receive a signal okay then i calculate where have i received the signal how long has it taken then i receive another signal then based on that i can say okay this signal is coming from this place and it has taken this much time and then i take a third signal so forth so i take about three signals to identify my 3d space where i am on a two dimensional level without any altitude yeah so this is what i've heard about like you triangulate from three different uh, cell phone towers that you know then once you triangulate you could kind of yes. identify yes. where but, you but the cell phone tower has a long range so if you are inside the tower range you can travel from your house to another house maybe another two blocks the range is quite good right but if you want pinpoint accuracy like i am here not three blocks away then i need to have a better triangulation system right far better mm -hmm. compared to a cell phone tower so for that and when satellite and when when the smartwatch or smartphone is calculating the um uh, calculate the exact location they don't create a circle uh, or they don't pinpoint like a they don't draw a line or they don't uh, draw what they draw is a sphere in this sphere i could be anywhere in this 3d space i could be anywhere then they take another sphere that's is another it, 3d it, space right okay sorry but I'm I'm just thinking like because you said radio frequency, right? So now the the wave has its like it's really large wave, right? Right. The wavelength is probably like ten meters or something. I don't know the exact wavelength. Uh, I think it's in. Is it because of the wavelength that the pinpointing is not possible? Because no, it's it's a it's a simple mathematics. So let let's let's say I tell you, uh, you are three hundred meters. So sorry, three hundred kilometers from Trafalgar Square. Okay, mm -hmm. three hundred kilometers of Trafalgar Square could be anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Now I say you are three hundred kilometers from Trafalgar Square, but you are two hundred kilometers from Brighton, mm -hmm. Brighton Beach. So yeah. now you know a region. You still don't know a point. You know an intersecting a region. Then you say I'm three hundred kilometers from Trafalgar Square, two hundred kilometers from Brighton Beach, and I'm hundred kilometers from Dover Beach. So now that's triangulation, right? You have three different yeah. points, and now you can say which is the intersecting area, and in that intersection, that would be quite small. That, that will would be, be quite there. small, right? But mm -hmm. in that intersecting area, there will be still two or three points where you could be. Because yes, it's a circle, right? So it will have two dots. So you could be there or there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if if you if you draw three circles together, and then you see. Where uh, where the points inter where the circles intersect, there will be two points of intersection. Okay, so that's that's uh, the triangulation. But instead of imagining it as a circle or a line, imagine a three D space. So you have a three D space with a radius from uh, Brighton, three D space with a radius from Trafalgar Square, and three D space with a radius from uh, Dover. And in that three D space, you are somewhere in that region. Get a fourth satellite. And now you can tell exactly where you are, and you can also tell how high you are, the elevation. But but I mean, how is the height determined? Because this is in a in a geometric space. You are kind of 
you know, with the fourth uh, sort of, you know, if you say tower, you could sort of pinpoint it more, your location. Exactly. But, but pinpointing... how do you... So know, the, I mean, location, the, the location is for the device, right? Mm -hmm. And the device is at a particular height, say you are in Mount Everest, mm -hmm. giving an example. So from Mount Everest, the signal will take less time, especially from the sky, it will take less time to come to you. So you can, you can decide the horizontal elevation and the vertical elevation, right? Where you are. So based on, based on where you are located, depending on the time elevation. it is it because of the depending on the time it takes for the signal yes. to travel? Yes. All right. Yes. That is what oh, is that's calculated very on the phone. Intricate. That's very intricate. That's that's really interesting. Yeah. So it's it's not just like uh, the you're receiving the signal. How much time is that take? It has taken for you to receive that signal mm -hmm. from that particular satellite. So all that is calculated, and these satellites uh, are sending signals at particular frequencies or range of frequencies. And each system, so we talked about GPS and there are other con star const uh, satellite constellations uh, provided by other countries in the world and they use their own system. So they must be using a different frequency because you don't want to send the same signal at the same frequency. You want to use different frequencies so you don't jam. So you don't jam maybe aircraft uh, transmission. So uh, air, uh, uh, aircraft is traveling and they are sending the ATC tower or they're talking to the ATC tower at a particular frequency. You have cell phone frequencies. You have so many other frequencies. So you need to have a bandwidth in which you will send only the GPS signals and no one else is going to use it for anything else. And then you need to say, my country, my constellation of satellites will send uh, send the GPS uh, the, the signals only in this frequency, but your satellite, your system will send it in that frequency. So suppose right. you move from uh, one country to another, there are different regulations, right? So you cannot like um, the cell phone frequencies that you use say in UK are different from maybe cell phone frequencies that we use in India or US. Is right? that how it is? Because I I didn't. Realize. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. And, uh, I mean, they they might have a limitation. Like okay, if you because that's why you need a SIM card to register yourself on that particular uh, network, right? Because before, right now, you know, I I remember like. I think more than 10 years ago, but there was GSM 900 and then GSM 900. Yeah. So I think it's the same set of frequencies, but you have to use a particular uh, network in order to access those frequencies. So yes, you're right. You're using the same frequencies yeah. everywhere, but you have to uh, get authenticated to use that network in that particular right. region. This is what also confuses me because you know, what you're saying is GPS is only in US. So in Europe, we have, no, no, Probably. no. GPS is there globally because Earth is, if you take a circle around the planet Earth, it's not like you're just going above US. But we said that that's owned by US, but owned it is available US. everywhere. Owned by US. What that means is, if you look at Facebook, Facebook is a US company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's okay. like that. Facebook is used globally, but it's a US company. It's registered in the US. Right, and okay. If they have yeah. to operate in Europe, they have to have a separate companies, have separate taxation, etc. But essentially, it's a US-based company. <clears throat> but it's used by everyone in the world. So GPS is a US-based system used by everyone in the world. Okay. The other systems that are there is uh, GLONASS. This is owned by Russia. Global Navigation Satellite System. GLO for Global NAS Navigation SS Satellite System. Okay. For Europe, it is called Galileo. Okay. Right. Then for China, there is Beidou. Spelling is B-E-I-D-O-U. Beidou, China. Okay. It's not the same as Baidu. Which Baidu, is the, which is the search uh, engine, which is the famous search engine, which is the alternate to Google in China. Right. So China has their own constellation. Then you have uh, India. India is called something called as Navic. Navigation in Indian constellation. Navigation Indian Constellation. Okay. Right. So that's India. And then there is Japan. QZSS. Quasi Zenith Satellite System. QZSS. Okay. So these are the major satellite systems in the world today. Okay. Now, when you buy a smartphone, if you look at the specs, say you go to a website called GSM Arena and you look at the specs for a particular phone, say iPhone 
10 or iPhone, say the recent iPhone 14 Pro, you just look at the specs for that. And if you scroll down, in the bottom you will see G uh, navigation systems and there will be GPS, GLONASS, etc, etc. So basically what it means is, it is not just using one singular system to tell you where you are and what's your elevation, how fast you're moving, but it's using multiple satellite systems to tell exactly where you are. And, but why is it needed? Can you answer why is it needed? Why are these different satellite systems? So needed? instead of triangulating, it's triangulating from further away or by... No, but, in... uh, but GPS system could do everything. Why did the, why did Europe or Russia build their own system? So if I am traveling, then I am also covered. Or is it because, but GPS also covers the whole world, right? Exactly. So uh, Rina, tell me, why do we need so many systems? So the only other thing I, only other reason I could think of is because if it would give you more accuracy, if, you know, if you had... I think from a tech, don't think techno technology. Why yeah, would so that was, the, that's, yeah, if I, if I kind of zoom out a little bit, international relationships or whatever, I think each country exactly. would want to do it for their own safety. And so also... tomorrow, tomorrow, US blocks access of GPS to Russia. How will people navigate in Russia? That's a, that's a good point. So, so there is a there is a war happening uh, now in Ukraine. Russia has invaded Ukraine, and uh, Western countries have put a lot of sanction. And I'm guessing one of the sanctions would be you're not going to use our GPS satellites. <laughs> yeah, that hasn't happened yet. I think, but yeah, it could it, very it well. Could, yeah. It could, right? It's it's a it's a part of the warfare. I mean, I don't know how you block it. Like, do you block it <laughs> when it goes over Russia? How do you do it? I don't know, but. It is one way to block access to a navigation system, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, That's you can case. also jam a signal. So you're receiving a signal, you can jam that signal from that particular. So you need backups. Mm -hmm. In case GPS fails, the world has no backup. So every country right. thought for itself, thought for its own benefit, and they have come up with their own system. So Europe has GLONASS. It doesn't mean that you are using just GPS. You are actually using all the systems which are supported by your smartphone, which you are not aware of, which you will be only aware when you are actually looking at the specs. And that's where I got this idea of let's talk about this topic because many people may not be aware that we are using multiple navigation systems on our so smartphones. So even if I am just in one country, I'm still using all of these All other... the systems, all the systems. If, right. it, if, if the satellite is going above you. So imagine... There are 30 satellites uh, for GPS and there is maybe 30 satellites for um, uh, Galileo. And if you're in India, then you have Navic. So it has about 20 or 30 satellites and they are there. But at any given point in time, you will not have all the satellites over you. So, mm. so suppose uh, the, the 30 satellites orbiting around planet Earth from GPS, not all the 30 satellites will be over India when you are there maybe one or two, maybe three. But if you want more accuracy, you might use some other systems. So I'll use system from India, I'll use system from Europe, I'll use system from Russia. And with mm. those, with all that information, I can pinpoint exactly where you are, under which tree you are, mm. right? So in order to increase the accuracy, the systems, th there are so many systems, so just leverage on those things. Okay, so that is that is the whole constellation and that is the whole idea why we have, why there is, why we selected this topic of global navigation satellite system because there are multiple systems and GPS is the most popular. It's the first, so it has stuck. So now there is a search engine, we say Google it. Google is not the only search engine. There is Bing, there is Baidu, there is many other search it's engines. That 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 go. Go. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, but we, it's like, okay, just Google it. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, oh, we have GPS, but GPS is just one system of many. Right, yeah. But GPS, what is it used for? I mean, we know position, location, but exactly what are the what are the main things? So one is your position or location, where you are. Other is navigation, point A to point B. So you use Google Maps or you use any, any mapping uh, software and you want to go from one place to another, so you use navigation. So it, it looks at where you are located, and from there, where do you have to go? And based on that, it tracks your chart. It then tracks whether you're on track or not. If you go oh, outside right. the road, 
or you miss a turn then it will uh-huh. reroute based on the location so it's tracking <coughs> navigation then yeah tracking. i mean you start talking about this and then you realize how much calculation is actually going on in all of your mundane tasks that you do exactly. every day this is so amazing that is amazing think, right and it's happening in right. the palm of your hand <laughs> yeah yeah and also the expertise required to make all of these happen i mean it's just it's just phenomenal i mean but the thing is there's so many smart people are working to make all of these possible but they all have specific expertise no the person who is like you know really expert on on gps system or maybe doing not you know maybe you can't be an expert on the whole gps you can only be an expert on the part of it to do one type of calculation from satellite to your phone or whatever and then all of these different experts collaborating together to make something that is that is so beneficial to the mass mass public exactly it's just quite interesting to me yeah i mean just like the internet right it was uh, called the mm-hmm. darpa net right and then yeah. it became internet because it was open to the public so similarly this was navstar which it was open to the public mm. so for the benefit yes. of everyone right but because the military saw that okay this can be actually used for so many other people and so so many other benefits so we talked about location we talked about navigation what are the other things we can use it for tracking so if someone gets lost you can track that person where they are mm-hmm. track, yeah, track your I... uh, farm animals where they are going oh yes yes yeah i mean anything that you want to track which you needs a higher range than bluetooth yes that's 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 Location. your answer so you as long as it's within you can track as long dogs. as it's within earth right i mean but uh, i one of the things i always wonder right i mean i i see some youtube videos where they create a, like a makeshift balloon to go to space with a camera and then it drops down after you know after it reaches a certain height it can't go on anymore because of the balloon bursts or whatever and then it kind of drops down but by the time it drops down it's like further away from where it lifted off from so yes how does the person find that so tracking without... beacon tracking beacon so there is a beacon right. that's constantly being sent and you're just tracking that and the other thing is um you know location in mars you know when when we sent the uh, the the i even forgot the name the rover or pathfinder the... perseverance yeah. perseverance yeah so, so how do we know the location how are we communicating with them that's not gps of course that is not that's... gps so they they have a other navigation system and i'm pretty sure there is a so before you send a rover on mars you have to first send a satellite that can orbit the planet so you track the weather you track the you you map the whole thing so the next step from tracking is mapping mm. so you have to first you have to then start mapping and how you map is you take the phone and you start moving around with the phone so then you can figure out okay where are the roads okay how much is the height and you can then create a map just based on altitude and where you are located which are the roads which are the rivers how fast you're moving if you're on a flight etc etc right Mm-hmm. so that way you can do mapping so that's another way and the last is time you keep track of the time based on the location based on the where we are in the orbit right right okay because yeah. time is arbitrary right time is arbitrary i mean we say yeah. that okay time is part of the universe but it's not time <laughs> is measured against something what yeah, is that something there is a reference point There's always a reference yeah. point but which is the original reference point it's like the question of god is there really a god <laughs> what is the original god so it's it's something like that what is the original reference point there is no original reference point everything is referenced against something yes yes that is that is uh, that is very interesting to be honest i mean i know we're kind of off top off topic off a bit top, yeah. but <laughs> yeah when you talk about length yeah there is a reference point even which you know which against which the meter is defined or centimeter but, or whatever but length you can but, see time you yeah. can see and that's that's what really like makes me really excited to think about is because time is the reference point is also the reference point itself is arbitrary you're just deciding this is what a second is exactly and yeah. that second is different based on the gravitational force so theory of yeah. relativity says that the time on earth and the time on mars will be different 
or the time mm-hmm. at the center of the earth and the time at top of mount everest will be different time yes. on an aircraft that is traveling at the speed uh, at very high speed will be different than people who are actually on the ground time of the satellite will be different and from people on uh, on your smartwatch absolutely and people who uh, who are uh, frequent flyers would age differently i mean it would be a very you know decimal point yes, exactly. uh, seconds exactly. uh, smaller or higher but still uh, you know there is a difference uh, yeah. there is a difference yeah. so when the ground sat when the ground stations are contro- controlling all these satellites even if there is if if there is a one second uh, uh, out of sync then the satellite could be like hundreds of kilometers away off orbit so you have to make sure that they are always constantly in sync with the time so that you can track where they are exactly otherwise you can lose a satellite so yeah this is this is actually related to what i was saying in the beginning of our talk that uh, this is how we kind of proved that einstein's theory of gra- you know gravitational theory is more correct than than newton's yes. well you can't be more or less correct it is I correct i think i think he just <laughs> added a dimension of gravity so newton added the dimension of length and uh, time and uh, einstein added the dimension of gravity to the whole equation so newton said that everything is absolute einstein said everything is relative yeah i think i mean in terms of gravitational force though i think basically newton was saying is two two masses are attracted to each other but newt uh, einstein was saying that we are all in this fabric of space time and then we bend the space time and that's how the attraction calculation is different yes so the gravity uh, that is actually not gravity it is the bending of space time So mm-hmm. it is like you are yeah. going on a piece of paper, but if there is a ball, you start sinking. You start going uh-huh. towards that ball. So yes. Similarly, uh-huh. I'm I'm going towards Earth be, from Sun because I'm closer to Earth. So closer to the the uh, mm-hmm. what do you say the curve the curve that yeah. Earth has created. And if you go towards Sun, it is more. So I fall more quicker the moment I enter Sun's gravity. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But if I have enough, there are some really good graphics around. There are YouTube. some really good graphics, but those yeah. are all two dimensions. You have to now think about three dimensions because that same thing is applied on top as well. It's not like it's just you're going down. You can go <laughs> up as well, right? The space yes. is bent around it, not just in one dimension. Mm, that's dimensions. that's very interesting to think about because for some reason we're all like I don't know how. I mean, the initial instinct is to just think Should about things two D. Yeah. But we are three D people. I mean, and we are very much capable of imagining. I think the the way we were taught in our education system is to make it easier for us to understand. They probably showed us in two D and then took us to three D. But I think we just you know got familiar with two D so much exactly. that whenever we imagine something, and that's a that that that's that's probably I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but yeah, I mean we we have to kind of tell ourselves that look we are in a three D world and imagine, you know, all the physics around you is happening in three D. So if you think of a wormhole, what how would a wormhole look like in uh, space in three dimensional space? Will it be a hole? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a tube, right? It'd be. it could be a tube but uh, uh how do how do you put a tube in space <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i don't know i don't have the answer so, so yeah so in interstellar the movie they tackled this concept right mm-hmm. so it, uh, the whole will be a sphere to ah, a, a, another mm-hmm. dimension but so so just moving on from the what you said is yes we mm. by default we assume everything is uh, we assume everything in two dimension but we are actually three dimensional beings so we need to start imagining in that direction so how would 3d space when it's bent look like we we, mm-hmm. we can't draw it right we can't draw it we mm-hmm. can't create a v- maybe we can create a video out of it maybe i'll share a video if there is someone on uh, something on youtube but yeah so that's uh, about gravity but let's come back to the navigation system right yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so we have expl- we have explored the different types of navigation system we have explored there are three main components one is the satellite system sending the signal one is the controls uh, area which controls the satellite to stay in orbit to maintain it to make sure that it's everything is uh, correct and then a receiver which could be your smartphone which could be a smartwatch which could be a proper gps device and uh, the bigger the sensor the better the signal accuracy 
it's it's as simple as that uh, the bigger the sensor of a camera the more uh, the better quality the image is so similarly if the bigger the sensor the more uh, information you can capture and you can ex exactly tell where you are okay so it's important but of course now the are there any limitations to the system of course there are limitations because these systems have been uh, they are there but they don't know they can't differentiate between land and ocean right yes so okay. suppose you are navigating and it shows okay there is a road going 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 and now you have to go to an island so there is a straight line but it <laughs> has to go through a bridge but now it takes you to the river and there have been cases where actually someone has fallen into a river because the navigation took it there then there have this been this is in the early stage though right early when stage, early stage, yes, yes no but even even now, i mean yes systems are getting better but yes it has happened <laughs> someone has gone up a mountain and they are not able to go up or down right <laughs> so, so those things can happen with a navigation system and even now i mean when when i try to ride a bicycle it takes me somewhere like it's totally where there is no road i can't even ride bicycle there of course you can <laughs> walk over those areas but it takes me to those locations where a cycle can't go so those gps systems are not that it will not tell you ex how the land is it will just tell you your location so you need to think about that as well it has got a limitation it will not mm. tell you the geography of the land it will tell you where you are if you are in the sea it will know you are in the sea but it will not be able to tell that okay you are in the sea mhm mm yes it will tell you, i mean okay, somewhere I, in the I sea think you the situation are. is in your cell phone it cross references with previous data that google mapped already and it knows which what 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 is street exactly. and what is field and what is water exactly. and all exactly so that's how it uh, so you it, you you so how google street view or mapping must have done satellite images and then people moving on that so then you can figure out which are roads which are not roads you can maybe do you can create an algorithm where you can say okay these are roads these are that's another interesting part where how google understands where there is traffic or not because i saw another video i knew it before but then this this guy did a youtube video uh, where he actually put it in practice i think it was in norway or denmark some some european countries where he got all of his friends for uh, actual mobile phones in a in a trolley like there's like 50 mobile phones and then he was walking around in a very quiet road where there is no traffic at all but at that time if you check in google maps it was like red like fully um you know full traffic in 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 that road because what google does is google takes google doesn't know whether there is traffic or not whether it is traffic jam you know people have to wait they just know the lo gps location of the mobile phones and if the phones are not moving in a street then it kind of calculates that as, as exactly as... that's how they know there is a traffic jam because if there are mm -hmm. so many people going in a particular direction and google knows that it's a road from the maps and if mm -hmm. people are not moving and the speed is slow based on the gps location then mm -hmm. it can connect everything together and then say you are in a traffic and that yeah that, and that traffic. experiment was was so cool uh, i've i've thought about doing this myself but i couldn't i couldn't gather 50 so many phones. <laughs> yeah you need a big social network like, yeah. <laughs> you can fool the but, system there is a traffic yeah yeah i mean if you just literally get 50 people walking the same direction but very slowly on a street it will come up as, as you can fool uh, the system so see yeah. that's the thing plus gps system because it's a radio signal it can be jammed you can block it mm -hmm. So oh right block, yeah you can it's a signal right do you do, how do you block signals you just you have some reflectors or you send some opposite signal etc etc so you can always jam it and you know there are documentation like okay this signal is being sent at this frequency so you can monitor those frequencies i mean of course there is no information there it's just position of a satellite and what will you do with the position of a satellite from earth you can't do much you can't remote control a satellite from earth yeah, but I feel like if, if we, if within our audiences, if we have like an avid um, uh, telescope person who looks at the stars and, uh, uh, you know, things in the sky, uh, they might be quite interested that you could calculate where a satellite is from. Yes, there are apps, and there are apps for it. Point your telescope at it and then you can see. And I, I saw a video recently and where the person was waiting I think for a long time to see a satellite against the moon. So 
you know, it would, you know, they pointed it to the moon, uh, but, you know, a satellite would go through, go past in between. And that, that was, that was actually a very cool video to watch as well. I, I would I would love to watch that. It would give a nice light trail across the moon. That would be nice. Yeah. So I actually uh, I actually used an app to track the International Space Station. And when I knew that International Space Station was going above me, I actually saw it with my naked eyes. Because the International Space Station is not very far from us. It's, it's like a few... Oh, well, that's interesting. I, I think it's about 400 kilometers. I can't remember exactly. But it's, mm. it's the closest... It is closer to us oh, than that, many cities. That sounds like yeah, yeah, very yeah. close to Everest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so you can actually see it moving really fast with a very bright light, with naked eyes, oh. no satellite needed. It is one of the. <laughs> so there are trackers which tell you like, okay, where when is uh, ISS passing over you? So wow. yeah, so the, it's it's so cool. Like you can do all these things, but imagine with these technologies. A smartphone has made us so dependent on it. Like we cannot travel without our smartphone. We don't know what to do if we go out <laughs> in the forest. Like how do we navigate ourselves? Exactly. But more interesting, even I mean, especially more interested now after after you know learning all of this from you today, is that how much calculation is happening in the background, right? I mean, you think, oh, why is my phone slow? And but you know, it's it's just turning away mathematics behind in the background so but no i mean it still should be fast enough i'm not i'm not so the, uh... the thing is uh, i mean we should also appreciate the computing power that has happened mm. and in the amount of space space as in the physical space so mm. earlier the computers used to fill up a room they used to be giant okay yeah. so they used to fill up a room now they sit in the palm of our hand they are that small and they can calculate much more than what was calculated maybe in the computer that was uh, sent to the moon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. so the computing power has become, um, what do you say? The computing power has become very, uh, a lot. Computer, mm -hmm. compu com computing power of computers has improved quite a lot. And the size of the computers has reduced or the processor. And because of that, we are able to enable all these technologies. We are moving yeah. further ahead. Now we are going to have an AI processor on our chip someday that is going to just create a random AI or whatever. And that will be the next step. So with so much compute power, you can do so many things. Yeah, absolutely. I am looking forward to what the future holds. Unfortunately, I'll, I won't be here forever, but yeah, the next 30, 40 years, hopefully, uh, we'll be seeing the advent of how things change. I mean, the way things are changing now are, are like in, in, in mega speed. I mean, you know, 100 years ago, I think there were innovations, but not at at the speed that we are at, we are experiencing right now, right? I mean, you know, cell phones have gotten like from a brick to a, you know, tiny ones, handheld foldable, and foldable phones <laughs> can do so much more, right? Yes. So, uh, yeah, and all the uh, different things where innovation is happening right now in AI and then in med tech, in ed tech, in all, in all of these different technologies being um, worked on. I'm, I'm quite excited for the future and hopefully our audience are too and uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed our talk about GNSS which is a parent topic of GPS um, uh, today with us. Uh, please do let us know if you guys have any suggestion or feedback around what we talk about or what we could talk about in future. If any of you guys have a particular expertise or not, uh, just want to uh, reach out to us to talk about anything, uh, do reach out. Our, our contact details and everything is within the description of whichever platform you're listening to us at. Um, pick, speaking of platforms, we are available in YouTube and all the major podcast platforms. Uh, please do seek out if you are just randomly come across to us. Um, we talk about any kind of technology related topics and we'll continue to do that um, for uh, uh, as long as we can, I suppose. And we welcome any any guests in, in relevant topics that we can. Yes. So yeah, hopefully you guys had uh, a bit of awareness, bit of understanding on the technology behind 
you know, your day-to-day -day life today. And uh, we hope to bring you more and more topics in, in the coming weeks. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Renat, for ending that, uh, ending it on a um, high. I think uh, sometimes we stop appreciating the marvel that we have in our hands, and uh, mm -hmm. we just end up scrolling through Instagram and Facebook, etc. But there is such a, I mean, so much human ingenuity has gone into making that smartphone, which is which is the culmination of so many years of efforts and innovation that it's uh, unimaginable but here it is and uh, we, it's it's just good to understand what's happening behind the scenes so yeah this is our way of trying to understand it and then bring it to you guys so you can appreciate it even more and maybe you can do something with it so yeah thank you so much for listening and uh, see you next time yes thank you very much guys <laughs>